Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. In this uh, next set of videos, I'm going to talk about the necessity to, apply, to deploy solar radiation management uh, technologies to uh, clip off this enormous temperature rise that we've been seeing. So I'm going to go through um, sort of some of the logical uh, reasoning behind why this is absolutely required and I'll talk about um, sort of, I, I've been discussing this for a long time. Um, as you can see um, in this article that I wrote, Anthropogenic Arctic Volcano Can Calm Climate from over four years ago, Thursday, January 10th, 2013. So I'm going to um, I'm going to get the lights to increase the contrast and I'm going to talk about basically basically first of all the world needs to really recognize that we're in a global climate change emergency. Everything is going exponential on us including uh, greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere, temperature rises, I mean, look, we had um, about up until, say, four or five years ago, we were at a temperature of about 0 0.85, 0 0.9 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial. Um, this year, um, for now, the numbers have just come out for 2016, and we're 1.25 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial. So if we go uh, actually 1.25 degrees Celsius above, sorry, the 1880 to 1920 mean. So add 0.3 degrees to that, that's 1.55 degrees above pre-industrial. So we're basically uh, about 0.6 or 0.7 degrees Celsius warmer than we were um, in just the last um, five years, say. Uh, so you know, it's ridiculous. The, the warming now has greatly accelerated. We did have a powerful El Nino, which notched us up. It didn't, of course, it doesn't come back down after these. It kind of stabilizes, and it looks like we're heading into another strong El Nino. The Pacific Decadal Oscillation um, appears to be switching to, to the warm atmosphere phase, where a lot of energy is released from the ocean up into the atmosphere. So the emergency is getting more and more severe. Meanwhile, the human response is uh, going quite well on the renewable energy front. I call that bar, uh, leg one of the three-legged bar stool. Renewable energy has reached parity with fossil fuels and has actually dropped below. There's huge developments as we're making advances in battery technology, but all this stuff is not happening fast enough. We need to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We need to deploy CDR technologies, which I'll talk about in great detail um, in the next little while. I've discussed it in the past. We also need to apply solar radiation management techniques to cool the Arctic, cool the planet, to buy us time to do these other techniques. So just gonna get the lights to improve my contrast. So I'm gonna, in this article here, from over four years ago, I said, you know, rational decision-making needs realistic risk assessments. So we're choosing door A, which is no change in behavior of fossil fuel, energy sourcing, we're continuing to rapidly increase the greenhouse gas emissions. The al Arctic albedo is abruptly collapsing, reducing due to the terrestrial snow cover, area dropping 18% per decade for past three decades, sea ice area collapsing. Um, the ice-free condition is expected within a few years. Okay, it didn't happen um, according to the PO mass volume projections, um, but it's on, it's on its way. The ice is not forming properly this winter. There's a huge risk of this summer, um, or certainly before 2020. Remember, risk is the probability of occurrence times the significance of occurrence. The significance is enormous. Um, the significance to growing food, uh, water availability, temperatures, tolerances, and weather extremes is clearly massive. 
from disruption of the jet streams causing these weather extremes. Uh, today, so this is in 2013, climate change is directly, indirectly reducing global GDP by 1.6%, 400,000 human deaths globally, increasing to 2.6%, okay, and this number is very, um, a low ball estimate. We're getting over 500,000 deaths now from uh, things, from air pollution, aerosols uh, from industry. Um, global food shortage is a big risk. So door B is create the anthropogenic Arctic volcano, I call it, to calm the climate. Give me two large airplanes with pilots, some sulfur in solution, a few large nozzles, and uh, you can inject, uh, you know, um, sulfur dioxide in the upper atmosphere and replace the, uh, basically cool the planet. And it's a small fraction. The amount of sulfur required is a fraction, like a percent or a couple percent at most of the sulfur that we put each year into the lower atmosphere, into the tropopause, troposphere rather, to the lower atmosphere. And that's causing all of the problems. Just have to, you know, cut that sulfur dioxide out, which we're doing, it's dropping about 2.7% per year, but not quick enough um, because it's dropping in the troposphere, it's the temperatures are spiking up even more. So we're getting, this is one way we need to deploy this technology to um, try to restore a stable climate and, and, and while we slash emissions and apply carbon dioxide removal technologies. Very little sulfur is needed relative to the huge emissions from smokestacks in the lower atmosphere from coal burning power plants. We know it will work. We've seen what volcanoes do. Um, El Chichon, 82. Uh, Mount, uh, uh, um, Pinatubo, um, in 1991, injected 10 teragrams of sulfur into the atmosphere. Within six months later, there was still six there. It caused half a degree of cooling for up to three years. Al Chichen was about three to five teragrams. Um, global emissions are right now about 55 teragrams of sulfur. Um, a teragram is 10 to the 15th grams. It's equivalent to a gigaton. A gigaton is a billion tons or 10 to the 9th tons. A ton is a thousand kilogram, a metric ton. A thousand is 10 to the cube. Kilogram is 10 to the cube grams. That's another 10 to the 6th times 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 15th. So one teragram is equal to one gigaton, just to give you the uh, scale conversion. So door two, door B rather, has two sub doors, bad and good. Door B bad is using the sulfur injections to calm climate continuing the fossil fuel energy sourcing with rapidly accelerating greenhouse gases. It's a false reprieve since the greenhouse gases will continue to acidify the ocean, destroy the base of the food chain. Luckily for us, door BG exists. B is using the sulfur injections to calm climate and rapidly slashing fossil fuel energy sourcing, ramping up conservation, energy renewables, as much as humanly possible. We're talking about Manhattan Project or Apollo type programs. Um, you know, or even having a US president, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that right now, or a Chinese one getting all the CEOs of car manufacturers together in a room telling them they have to, they will produce no cars for three years. They're going to only produce wind turbines, geothermal heat exchangers, solar panels. Is this possible? Well, we did it in World War II. This meeting occurred and for the next three years only war materials were produced. No passenger cars. Just have to have the, the guts to do it. You know, the, the guts to recognize the dire straits that we're in with our climate emergency and the guts to take the action that's required to get us to step away from the precipice. Okay, give me a plane, pilot, nozzle, and sulfur, and I can calm the climate. Okay, so this was, I did this, I wrote this uh, three years ago. It was in Sam's great site, Sam Carana's great site, Arctic News. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens with a volcano. These volcanoes are popping off. Anything, you know, any decent sized volcano with the ejection upwards puts ash, sulfur dioxide, CO2, HF, HCl, water, all these things that injects them. If it's powerful enough, 
If it's a small volcano, this stuff stays in the troposphere, the lower atmosphere, it's rained out within a week or so. If it's a large volcano, but not upwards, sideways, like Mount St. Helens, um, the stuff doesn't get up into the stratosphere. The stratosphere is about, on average, 11 kilometers high. Um, at the equator, 17 kilometers. At the pole, about 7 kilometers. Colder air is denser, so the, the tropo, troposphere, um, the top of the atmosphere where there's weather, the lower atmosphere, um, is uh, variable in height. So here we go, we inject this stuff into the stratosphere. Then it disperses around the planet. The SO2 produces H2, H2SO4, highly reflective to visible light. So you get the photochemistry, the dispersion, um, the stuff that's in the lower atmosphere produces the acid rain, like coal burning power plants do, the nucleation, condensation, and so on. Highly reflective materials. Um, now the thing is, is that the sulfur from the volcano are all different sizes. Large particles, small particles. The larger particles, even though the, all that stuff goes up into the stratosphere, the upper atmosphere, the larger particles are heavier, they rain out fairly quick, they, they, the gravity pulls them down faster, and then they go into the lower atmosphere where they're rained out within a week. So the smaller the particles, the longer they'll stay in. So the anthropogenic Arctic volcano, we can do much better. We can pick the particle size, 0.1 micron or something, um, so that we get very small, um, highly reflective sulfur dioxide particles, and they're smaller, they're lighter, they'll stay up much longer than the volcanic ones where there's a large distribution of size. We'll have all the right size to stay up the longest, to have a much longer lifetime, and we reflect a lot of the sunlight, and eventually the stuff comes down, but it, again, it's a, a fraction of the levels that we're presently putting into the lower atmosphere. We want to get rid of the stuff we're putting in the lower atmosphere, the sulfur. We're presently doing this. You know, it kills half a million people per year. And we want to take 1% of it and have that in the upper atmosphere instead. And uh, that will cause much more, um, that will mitigate the large temperature rises that we're seeing. It will give us some time to, to deal with this climate emergency while we still preserve some semblance of a stable climate. So let me close this one and this one. Okay, so once the particles are up there, this is the 17 kilometers. This is the troposphere here, lower level, seven or eight kilometers in the Arctic, 90 degrees, zero degrees. So this is the equator. So if the particles are put up from the volcano, then they basically follow this, uh, follow this uh, down, go down this curve essentially. We get aircraft sulfurs and soot here. Some particles exchange with the lower atmosphere in this tropopause fold here uh, where the jet streams are. Um, and there you get a polar vortex and nucleation. Particles can mine to larger sizes, be pulled out by gravity get these polar stratospheric clouds and stuff, stuff is removed. But we're talking about quantities taking 1% of all the amount that we put here every year and putting it up here instead to um, basically to uh, cool the planet and buy us time to apply the other techniques, which is removing the, the CO2, the greenhouse gases here, ensuring that we don't get a completely, you know, giving the sea ice a chance to recover along with other techniques like sea ice thickening, for example, pumps on top of the sea ice, whatever else. This is not, this is, this is allows us to use a lot of other solutions and it clips off the urgent, it backs us off from the precipice, if you like, or we've already gone over the precipice. It applies a parachute, catches us, tries to bring us back by our fingernails onto the top of the preface, preface the precipice. Okay, um, so these are global anthropogenic sulfur emissions. So they kind of peaked here in Europe and uh, North America. They're going up in East Asia. But so, you know, so, so there's a distribution of where the um, emissions are happening and where the cooling is happening. So in the, in the, strop in the stratosphere, stuff is uniformly put around the planet. Um, so I'll have to stop this video here and continue. Thanks.